Equity markets in India and globally have been in a bit of a tizzy over the past several weeks. It started before the uh, onset of the conflict in Ukraine. In fact, it's something that dates back to the worry about uh, unwinding of easy monetary policy. And there are several other factors also to bear in mind. I'm joined, in fact, by uh, Kirtan Shah, uh, who's the founder of uh, the co-founder and chief executive officer of Credence Wealth Advisors. Uh, Kirtan, you've studied this in some detail and I'm hoping that our conversation will give people a little bit of context and then we'll get into how one should deal with the current scenario. But first, if I were to ask you, why has global equities taken the kind of drubbing that it has over the last couple of months? What would you say? Uh, Alex, thanks so much for having me on the show. Uh, so Alex, like you rightly put, I think uh, to my mind, uh, uh, whatever we've been seeing happening to the equities market is uh, probably more to do with inflation and interest rate than the war. Right. So like you rightly said, even before the war started, uh, you know, six months before the war started, I think FIIs have been aggressively selling the Indian markets. And uh, we've, we've really not, we've really seen the FII favorite stocks like the HDFC group and so on and so forth, uh, being under pressure since a long, long time before the war started. So ideally, what we really have to understand is that uh, the larger problem of this market is, uh, is inflation going up and hence interest rate uh, going up as an expectation and war just uh, you know kind of extrapolated it uh, slightly more faster than it could originally have been right so uh, to put this in context i think there was so much of uh, liquidity flushed in the in the markets uh, you know over the last two years because of the corona crisis that the market uh, was injected with uh, uh, you know, the kind of liquidity that we really saw, which drew the global markets, including the Indian markets up. You know, uh, before the war struck, we saw inflation in the US uh, being at 40 years high. Even before uh, the war struck, we actually saw the 10-year yield on the US uh, bonds uh, go above uh, 2%. You know, all of these things were very categorically making... Uh, uh, an assumption or pointing towards growth coming back in the global markets and hence the kind of liquidity that was made available over the last two years or the low interest rates which were uh, you know prevailing uh, had to come to an end right and keeping this in mind because liquidity was going to be sucked out of the system or interest rates were supposed to go up you know uh, markets were already pricing in interest rates to go up uh, but uh, it's just that uh, this war unfortunately uh, happened and you know, you saw the markets reacting aggressively, but I think uh, you probably might end up uh, having a result on the war probably in a week's time or 10 days from today. But the larger context of this market is still going to remain high inflation and hence interest rates going up. Uh, Kizan, now uh, this next part of the conversation I think might get a little theoretical, but I think it's important to establish this fact. Now, traditional monetary policy uh, in uh, economies like India and also in the US, there is a, a balancing act between growth and inflation. And therefore, in order to support growth, uh, you had a lot of liquidity measures that were done. You also had interest rates kept very low. This is something that happened in India as well. Now, what is happening right now, the current context is that inflation, because of supply side issues, has been going up and demand side pressure also. We have elevated inflation and now this war is coming at a time uh, when we were hoping that growth had come back. So you might see an impact on growth and elevated inflation at the same time. And so therefore, a big conundrum for, I think, monetary authorities around the world. How should an investor look at these things and how do you think, think things will pan, pan out in the near to medium term? Uh, so, Alex, you put this uh, perfectly in the context. We typically, in the economical language, call it uh, stagflation. What we are trying to see right now, or what we are seeing right now, is inflation was already at an elevated level even before the war happened. Now, because of the war, you've seen supply constraint, uh, logistical problems. You've seen oil go up to as much as $130 uh, dollars or $140 uh, in the near term. And I'll not really be surprised if oil keeps going up, uh, if uh, the war does not come to a conclusion. And what is this doing is adding a lot of uh, 
lot of uh, near term pressure on inflation which is already extremely high now look as a monetary authority or probably as a fed or any other central bank you know you know that supply chain has got disrupted you got uh, decades high of inflation and this is really the time that you will have to uh, you know suck liquidity out of the system pump interest rates up but you are not going to be able to do that so swiftly is because now what has happened is because of this war you know you've seen that probably the global growth that you are envisaging might not happen because of various factors right uh, so now if the global growth is not going to happen in the way you were envisaging right uh, but yet there is inflation as a central bank you are always going to be in a 2020 situation of you know do i increase interest rates and by by how much so to give you so to give you uh, some analogy probably everybody before the war happened in the market was anticipating that fed in march will come up with a 50 base increase in rates right but you saw lately fed coming out with comments that you know we are prepared with 25 basis i am also open to 50 but i am uh, willing to do a 25 now what that has done is uh, while the market was pricing in a 50 basis uh, hike in march by fed now the market knows that the fed will not be able to do a 50 because there is going to be growth challenges the fed will only do 25 now the problem really here is stagflation what i mean by that is that if you do a 25 instead of a 50 that the market was anticipating you are not really going to be able to control inflation which is really the monster so now if inflation persists and you are slowly going to also increase interest rate which is also going to add pressure on the growth which is already already going to be hampered by war both of these are going to end up negative for the market inflation will keep going up interest rates will go up uh, unemployment will uh, increase and at the same time you will not be able to uh, control inflation right uh, this combination which we call as stagflation is something that market was not really prepared for and war has just extrapolated that and made it difficult for central banks and hence uh, if stagflation is the way forward or is is the direction in which we are moving forward i think the first thing that investors really need to do is uh, reduce their expectation from 2022 if we are actually moving in this direction of stagflation alex in my opinion 2022 is not going to be uh, probably a great uh, uh, return generator uh, in terms of what markets uh, were typically expecting and uh, uh, specifically given by what the market expectation has really been built over the kind of returns that uh, you know investors have been able to generate over the last two years this is going to be extremely difficult uh, 2022 a year for all of us who expected extremely high returns because of the th- because of the returns that we experienced in 2020 and 21 the first suggestion that i really have for investors is pay down your expectation in 2022 it is not going to be a great year in my opinion to actually come to that now because that really i think is the crux of the conversation we've set the context uh, so to speak uh, but how does the indian individual investor approach this because one has to take tactical uh, decisions here uh, one thing that has emerged i think over the course of the pandemic is the lure of investing in assets abroad in international equities does one pull back on that and say okay you know i'm going to be a little bit more conservative at least in the near near to medium term till things settle down uh, and how does the investor broadly approach their investment strategy in the near to medium term so alex look uh, some historical data point i think to put this in context so that a lot of us understand you know if you look at historical data points you will see that on a 3 year average return uh snp has generated a 4.4 4.5% kind of returns 3 months before the first rate hike happens you know if you look at the last uh, 50 years of data since the 1950 or probably 70 years of data you will see that 12 out of the 13 times uh the fed has increased rates uh you know the us markets have always given positive returns 12 out of 13 times but this time around the situation may be slightly different in terms of what we've experienced in the past because we are not talking about a simple plain rate hike but we are talking about a stagflation more than only just an inflation so my first suggestion very honestly to everybody who's uh, you know kind of uh, hearing me talk here is very simple first um, you know you have to pay down your expectation 
with respect to what 2022 can really do for us. Second, very importantly, you will really have to approach this market from a medium term perspective. You know, in my opinion, those days are gone that we've seen in 2020-21 where, you know, any stock that you bought went up. Uh, uh, things are going to be extremely stock specific now and uh, near term is going to be extremely volatile. So if any new money has to get invested in the market today, has to only come with a three-year time frame. Uh, anything that you will try and do with a shorter term time frame, trying to ride the volatility may not work in your favor. So follow your asset allocation, come with uh, at least a three-year uh, uh, view in mind in this market because you are not going to really be able to make anything significant in less than three years of time frame. And also what is very important in my opinion, uh, Alex, that uh, investors really understand that yes, historically, uh, India uh, has participated in probably five, uh, six out of the 13 rates, rate hike that US has seen. And we have delivered positive returns in five out of the six rate hikes that we've participated. But uh, the near-term markets are, in my opinion, going to be extremely volatile. And uh, probably, you know, uh, you know, this war may come to an end soon. We may see a relief rally in the markets. But uh, this relief rally, unless uh, we have clarity on whether we are moving on how in terms of inflation and interest rate might uh, get sold into. So please come to this market with a three-year uh, view. Uh, definitely, India is a perspective from a three-year, five-year. I don't see a reason why we are not going to end up doing very well as an economy. But if you are going to, you know, kind of come to the market to make quick bucks that you've seen in 2020-21, I don't think uh, that's the right strategy in the market today, Alex. Well put, Kirtan. And certainly the advice uh, that is coming in is to zoom out and to extend your time horizon. Thank you so much, Kirtan, for taking the time. All right, on that note, we are slipping into a short break, but on the other side, we've got a lot more, so do stay tuned.